If you want a career in music, you need to know what happens backstage, learn what the pros do, and see how they act. When you're a contracted musician hired to play with an artist or a band, a newbie musician can drive stage crews crazy. They can embarrass themselves and bring the morale of the whole band down. Welcome to Smith Music. I'm Paul Smith, and I'm going to show you how to fit in as a musician for hire. Even though it'll be obvious to an experienced musician and crew that you're green, if you do a few things, you can avoid embarrassing yourself. And even better, you can get yourself hired back and recommended to other artists. If you got the job, chances are that the artist likes your playing, stage presence, and the vibe that you have with the other band members. If you're playing with a fairly prominent artist, you might only get one practice with the artist before the show. It'll likely happen one or two days before the show or the afternoon of the show. You'll want to come in prepared. Have your parts memorized note for note. Most artists that function like this basically want you to do what's on the album and not improvise a whole lot. The level of creative freedom will vary from artist to artist and find this out in advance. Keep your setup as simple as you can. More gear means more that can go wrong. The artist wants someone who can fit in and play the line solidly. They don't need the best player in the world. They need someone who can deliver their specific lines. The artist also wants someone that gets along with people. At the highest level, all musicians are good. What artists need is someone that they can hang out with in a bus for 30 hours and not drive each other crazy. When you go to rehearsal, make sure that you're ready to play at the rehearsal time. Rehearsal time and load-in time are not the same. If it takes you a half hour to load in and get set up, get to rehearsal 45 minutes early. If it's a paid rehearsal, getting there late wastes everyone else's time and disrespects the artist. Bring food for yourself to rehearsal. Even if you think you won't be at rehearsal for long, it can be tough to predict. You don't want to be in a situation where you're hungry and trying to get a stellar performance out of yourself. You also don't want to put the artist or whoever's paying you in the position that they feel obligated to buy you food or put them in a position that they need to order food in. This can be highly interruptive to the rehearsal. When you go to the gig, you'll need to know a few things in advance. What gear are you expected to bring? Is food provided? What's the day schedule? If hotels are needed, who's responsible to pay for them? Do you need to provide your own transportation? Or is it provided? When you get to the gig, make sure you bring everything you need. Don't assume that patch cables are provided. If something goes wrong, you don't want it to be your fault. Experienced musicians are overprepared. The biggest thing I hear from newbie musicians is, I didn't think I'd need to bring that. This is admitting that you're inexperienced. If there's a slim chance that you might need to bring something like extra drum skins or patch cables or XLR cables, bring them. No one ever regrets being overprepared. Show up early for load-in. You might need to wait if front of house or lighting aren't ready. If you're playing an event that has tables and chairs set up for the audience, don't use the client's tables and chairs to hang out or put your gear on. Clients spend a ton of money getting everything set up correctly and having the band come in and wreck it is definitely not good. Find out where you can put your gear and where you'll be out of the way to wait. If you're playing an event without a sound check, you're going to do what's called throw and go. You can set up side stage and it's quicker to bring your gear up on the stage when it's partially set up. I did a video that demonstrates this and I've linked it in the description in the above card. If you like these kinds of videos, subscribe and hit the notification bell to get the latest studio, stage, gear and career advice. If you're doing a sound check, you'll need to get your monitor volumes right. Generally, a monitor tech will ask everyone to raise their hand in the air and, if, and they'll start giving them a source like kick drum. When you have enough in your monitors, drop your hand and they'll know to stop turning up the volume. They'll go through the same thing with snare, toms, bass, etc. Next, you'll play a song and see if your monitors are workable. Keep your monitor as quiet as you can stand to help keep stage volumes low. Put the least amount of instruments in your monitor that you need. You may not need acoustic guitar or kick drum, but you probably need vocal and definitely your own instrument. Don't use sound check as rehearsal. This wastes the crew's time and costs other people money. It's disrespectful unless it's agreed upon beforehand. If you're opening up for a more prominent artist, don't expect to meet them. If you do, keep it short and don't be an annoying fan. 
never force your way into a dressing room or invade their boundaries. Become friends with their tour manager or stage crew. This is the best way to get invited backstage. They very likely didn't see your set, they had other things to do. If you're allowed to hang outside stage, do it and stay out of the way. You never know who's going to show up. Oftentimes, other notable artists will be there as well as agents and important people to network with. In general, stay sober. You're working. Have a drink or two after the show, hanging out side stage, but don't get drunk. Imagine if you had a chance to meet one of the biggest agents or managers in the country side stage and you're drunk or high. You'd be better off not meeting them at all. Be nice to everyone. You never know who you're talking to. Don't make noise you don't need to when sound checking or at rehearsal or on stage. It's annoying to everyone. Your goal is to try to make everyone else's experience positive. Keep your stage volume as quiet as possible and still do your job. 99% of the time, stage crews complain that bands' stage volumes are way too loud. I've never heard a sound engineer complain that a band was too quiet. A quiet stage volume can sound monstrous out front and give the sound engineer more control. 